Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us on The Advocate. It has been an interesting week, really, from the sacking of the service chiefs to the rancor in oil state over the Fulani herdsmen. I am concerned about these drums of war across the country. That will be the core of my advocacy today. Jomoke is focusing on our health care in Nigeria, and Treasure is looking at lessons from the US inauguration. Peace is like fragrance, which you can't spray on others without having a portion on you. Welcome to The Advocate. Five panelists, five thought-provoking topics discussed in a no-holds-barred manner. In other words, we call a spade by its name. Today, I'm firing the first salvo by reminding us that war never brings peace. In other words, I'm saying it will be fallacious to label an entire community or ethnic group criminals because of crimes committed by few. Let us fish out the criminals and deal with them. Treasure, on the other hand, is directing our government to America. Maybe they will be able to learn a thing or two from Biden's inauguration. Jumoke, who I'm seeing for the first time this year, Jumoke, Happy New Year, <laughs> is challenging us, or if you like, waking us up to the realities of lack of affordable health care system in Nigeria. Liberus, unfortunately, is not taking a swipe at any governor or federal government today, but simply asking us to be more religious tolerant. Last but not the least, our man of many caps, Bolan, is not only gazing his ball on child marriage in the North, but the frightening number of out of school children in the country. So you can see it's a cocktail of topical issues spiced with seriousness and laughter. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back after the break. We're going to have to let truth scream louder to our soul than the lies that have infected us. Our nation on the precipice. Nigeria today has serious security challenges, no doubt. There is no part of the country that is completely immune from criminal activities, from banditry in the Northwest to Boko Haram in the Northeast, from armed robbery and kidnapping in the South to herdsmen farmer clashes in the Middle Belt and Southwest. We all know, or at least have an idea of the reason why things are so bad. Poor leadership, failed criminal justice system, poverty, despair, unemployment, and so on. Nigeria has been described as suffering from multidimensional poverty, the effect of which manifests itself in the rising rates of criminals. Criminal activities are stated above. The recent uproar in the Southwest as a result of individuals backed by some powerful people evicting Fulani headsmen from their regions signals, in my opinion, a failing state. Make no mistake, I'm not supporting the activities of criminal elements within the headsmen, but categorizing the entire community as criminals is what worries me. It may interest you to know that some of them are also victims of cattle rustling, which has not attracted any attention at all. The deafening silence of government in condemning the activities of the criminal element within the herdsman community has not helped either. Though government had made attempts through introduction of Ruga and ranching, 
But that seems to be failing. Lack of trust in government regarding their true intentions may have been responsible for this imperfect law. Government must now be creative in addressing this problem. Can they address the desertification issue in the north to forestall migration to the south? Why must you take laws into your hands? Rather, we should task our government to profile a long-lasting solution to this late, uh, age-long crisis. Nigeria should stand together to condemn criminal activities entirely and not resort to ethnic or religious colorization of the crimes. These, there are criminal elements among all the tribes. Why must we describe criminality by tribe or religion? What do you think will happen when you evict them from the Southwest? Have you forgotten that there are large communities of Southwesterners in the North? Have we forgotten so soon what led to the Civil War? Why we should tread carefully as the outcome of the resulting catastrophe would only benefit a few who have pilfered the wealth of this country. My advocacy today is not to advise against taking laws into our hands, rather profile solution to this age-long problem. Our strength lies in our diversity, and daring also lies a threat to our survival as a people. Let us tread carefully. Very interesting. Uh, if Nigeria had the solution, I'm sure that we would have preferred it since because our current president is a headsman himself, isn't he? At least he has a head of cattle of 150 that have refused to multiply. But I believe he knows about ranching. And um, lots of people who have discussed the quagmire in which we find ourselves as a country say that you cannot continue to do things the way you've always done it. When, one, the cattle that we have now has multiplied in numbers. So if we had 6 million in 1976, you know, when open grazing was allowed, maybe we have upwards of 30 million now. And the land that they had to graze on has also reduced in terms of population multiplication, there's um, desertification in the north and all of that. So you must find a new, prob a new solution to the new problem that you find yourself in, you know. But <sighs> saying not to call criminals by their tribe, is that not how I would describe somebody if he has a mark <laughs> that he says he's from somewhere? <laughs> I, I, I think, I think we, may, we may be mixing it up in a way. Yeah, I mean, that, that last part about um, not calling... Criminals by their tribes. By not, yeah, not tribalizing criminality. A crime is a crime, and it doesn't matter who commits it. Whoever commits a crime should be fished out and punished according to the law of the land. But when it start taking... For example, a woman was kidnapped. I think it was, was in a duo or Delta. And they kidnapped her from the church. After kidnapping her from the church, they took her to the bush and sold her to the, to the headsman in the, in the bush. So when we're talking that particular criminality now, so we first of all talk about the Edo criminals who kidnap her from church and then take her to the yes. Fulani criminal. Who's, a criminal is a criminal. And whoever is involved in that entire chain should be dealt with according to the laws of the land. Uh, uh, but, uh, you, you see uh, where the problem is, uh, really. I quite agree with you. Uh, let's not ethnicize criminality. But where the big problem is, um, I spoke with um, a, Fulani, a retired officer of a Fulani extraction, and he said if he were the president, the first thing he would do, the moment this issue started, he would say, you know what, this is not who, who we, we are, are as, as, as a, a people. people. I agree. We are better than this. The elders in our community, the stakeholders, let us fish out the bad ones amongst us before they begin to give our tribe a bad name. I agree. Take, for example, Nigerians. Because of the crime of a few Nigerians, once you step out with your green passport, you become that, you know, you are, you are profiled. Proving, you are proving guilty. It yeah. is for you to prove your innocence. Yeah. And it is normal everywhere. So what we should be doing now is this kind of advocacy. Let us collaborate. Let the stakeholders in our midst fish out the bad ones amongst us. Crime is not um, peculiar to a, a, a tribe or a ethnic group. In fact, like you said, it, they don't sell. 
There's a collaboration. It's a collaboration. <laughs> the locals will kidnap and hand over to those in the bush. Wow. Yes, that's. And so when you are talking to those in the bush, it is oh, the full animal that you hear. But those that kidnapped were the locals. For me, um, you have all talked about not ethnicizing, uh, you know, crime. Crime. So I'm going to move on to where you talked about um, tackling desertification in the north. I mean, Dubai has made it so easy to see that anything is infinitely possible if you, if you apply your mind to it and you desire change. Nigeria is not the, in the top 10 providers of cattle, wearers of cattle in Africa, nor in the world. We, are, we do not have that number to create this sort of crisis that we have. Th times have changed. And as we know, the only thing constant is change. Absolutely. So why allow these people to be nomadic? I know it's a lifestyle, but hey, this is the 21st century. No why not create ranches could be created in the north and grow grasses for, for, for the cattle and let them you know, do it properly with technology. In decently, <laughs> it could be done. It's, it's, Anyone it's, can it's, it's change. It's possible to do it. Anyone we, can, we can change. Who, who will do it? There, there are economics to these issues also, which is why the solution will always involve government. Government must be sure. committed seriously for it to take off. When you do a ranch, it's a capital outlay, and it could be huge. Hey. Let me also, let, let, let me land. Now, Ondo is saying, come and register if you are a header. Or your state is also planning to register headers. In the 50s, but they're not paying taxes. Headers were registered in the north. Mm -hmm. So we are going back to what we used to do in the past. 50, 60 years ago. When you register them, what happens? The cost of doing business also goes up. Because you, you are now taxable. It's the yes. law so recognizes you. The tax man there. will come after I you. I agree with you, but we yeah. can't also just leave all of these things. Because you also talked about um, um, uh, uh, what's it called now? Talk about um, grazing. You talked about um, uh, cattle rustling. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Jumoke said you endanger them. Yes, you do. And by buying guns for them, you don't know the mind of the people you are empowering because you give them guns to protect themselves. And a man with a gun can go into another person's ranch and you know, use that gun for another means. So that's why we need to rethink our strategy. Totally. Which means totally. farmers also need guns. Uh -huh. Then there'll be guns <laughs> everywhere. We, I, I, to protect I, I, themselves why. from I, I just, invaders. Before, before we know? close, I quickly wanted to add that we're talking about the cattle, uh, the herdsmen now. But I'm also focusing on not just the cattle issue, crime. Generally. Yes, correct. Generally. You know, why must we describe, for instance, it started with Islamic terrorist, Edo, prostitute, and now we're talking Fulani herdsmen in danger. So we need to be careful. Now, after all is said and done, we will have to deal with the criminal elements in the society. Rather than label every Fulani person in the West a killer, the Fulani elders and stakeholders will have to assist in fishing the criminals, giving the tribe a bad name too. After the break, Treasure is asking us to look out for talent rather than this idea of government throwing crumbs at isolated problems. Governance is about the people. It's a process of enablement, a creative intervention by political actors to change structures that prevent the expression of human potential. I'm talking about tokenism versus talent hunt, the U.S. inauguration. Now, the new U.S. President Joe Biden demonstrated the enabling power of a political actor so succinctly at his inauguration with the inclusion of Amanda Gorman and Breeding Harrington, both of them stutterers. I find their elevation into national and global limelight intriguing. During the 2020 Democratic National Convention, Nine-year-old Breeding Harrington said, and I quote, kids like me are counting on you to elect someone we can all look up to, someone who will make our country and the world feel better. Everyone who had struggled and who still struggle with a stutter 
could identify with breeding. And he won. Biden won. Then Braden was featured again on inauguration night, performing alongside superstars like John Legend, Justin Timberlake, and many more. Now, Braden's book is coming out this year. Tell me about the American dream. 22-year-old Amanda Gorman became the youngest in inaugural port and the sixth in a lineup that includes the legendary Maya Angelou. In her poem, The Hill We Climb, she describes her background this way. We, the successors of a country and a time where a skinny black girl descended from slaves and raised by a single mother can dream of becoming president only to find herself reciting for one. Wow. My favorite line is, but while democracy can be periodically delayed, it can never be permanently defeated. Wow, a second time. Now, Gorman has three book deals with enduring financial empowerment. Tell me again about the American dream. President Biden himself overcame stuttering. He has identified with these young ones and used his influence to elevate their statuses. What an inspiration for children with speech impediments. Indeed, as John C. Maxwell says, leadership is influence. Nothing more, nothing less. Leaders with empathy truly empower the people by providing a ladder for their dreams to come true. In other words, for me, democracy is not only about the number of votes lost or won, it's about humanizing governance. Back home here in Nigeria, our leaders have engaged more in tokenism and PR stunts than outright talent's discovery promotion, and empowerment of our young ones. I remember Governor Uzodima adopted nine-year-old Joseph Okpara, a coconut hawker who sings. He uprooted him from his family when he could have put him in a music school, get him a voice coach, and grow his skills. Will such children ever make it to state events to showcase their talents? Would such talents ever be mined into an enterprise in Nigeria? Seven-year-old successor Degoy Wari protested for being sent out of school for failure to pay an illegal exam fee. The private secretary to Governor Koa met the family on behalf of the Delta State Government. And then, what far-reaching reforms have taken place in public schools since then? Is success being groomed in public speaking and advocacy? We need to go beyond tokenism. We need to truly elevate talent into reckoning, continued significance, relevance, and enterprise. As Amanda says in the last three lines of her poem, for there is always light, if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. If only you are brave enough to show the scripts to the governors. <laughs> <laughs> and by the next inauguration, you will see them, they will bring one. Uh, it will happen. One. Really? Um, no, well, not that whether it will happen, we will know how to copy. We yes. just bring one. American did it. We need to do it that way. And you then after that, you won't hear anything. Down. You won't hear anything of that uh, small boy, <laughs> small girl again. And you know, all of this. So oh, it, it's. In, in, in President Buhari's inauguration in 2015, actually, there was a poet, Titi Lai or Shunuga. And I thought that was interesting at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that what, what for me, really, it's not this, uh, if our public schools were good enough, you won't have to adopt a child selling coconut on the street. True. You won't have to, success won't have to say, oh, they will beat me tired. <laughs> And then it now became a, a star. You know, a star. A star. Um, you know? So what will, I think what but I can know gather she was, from she this. was taking out of public school. Somebody paid mm. for her to go mm, for yes. private and school. And then a young girl that was writing um, homework on um, uh, a bank's using ATM, the, yeah. using right. a bank's ATM. Right. Like, you know, wouldn't have gone to that place to, you know. So for me, all of these are pointed to just one thing, that the tomorrow, the tomorrow, we are tomorrow can be better if only we prepare, you know, the ground for today. But unfortunately, we are not doing it. And so, um, what do you call it? APC copied slogan, 
and didn't live by it. <laughs> the Ghanaian president copied a speech and still do it is not living it. by it. That so it is not enough for us to Whoa. just to you copy. Know, copy. <laughs> Let us also give these young ones who can be better than even these people you see in America right. if only they are given the opportunity. Okay, so let's come to reality and say why the government has been unable. Because we see that the bulk of our budget annually is usually for paying salaries, right? With current expenditure. And so you take success out of the school, leave the school dilapidated as it has always been, and education is still at this lowest hub. Nothing changes <laughs> because once you become a governor, what I see for most of us is to go into government house to get out of poverty or get into power so you can enrich your friends. That's why you are celebrated now. Also. And that's why they congratulate you because you really do not solve any problems. And to seem like you're working is to tie a few roads here and there and see success and say yeah. we are going to pay her school fees rather than fixing the education. Mm. <laughs> I just want to quickly add that, you know, there's cause and there's and effect. Effects. Now, what we're talking about now is the effect of all of these things. Yeah. Now, and the, the course for me, and like they say, the le leadership is a reflection oh, of the people. Oh so the le kind of leadership we have now just reflects us as a people. Now, if we must change that, it means there must be inclusiveness. A lot of us Nigerians will sit down and analyze all the things that are not going right in the government, but would not participate. Right? Participate does not necessarily mean you have to hold elective position. It means you can start to campaign, educate people. We can keep going on and on about all the things that are not working, but this is the time to start advocating and putting those advocacy to work to ensure that we have the right people you know, ruling us in this country. The problem with our society is that the systems have all failed. They are old, they are cracky, they, are, they, are, they have messed up. In those other systems that you refer to, there are ways to catch those people you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So they identify, there are systems that will identify that he has a music talent. There are systems that will identify someone who has some other talent and nurture them accordingly. If you see the, the, the German education system, and I think the Finland, even America, all these people have evolved the system to be able to handle that. Here, we are still, the curriculum is still largely the industrial revolution of post-World War II. And it is not delivering the good. That is why somebody will fail English and math and we say it's dumb. Who says because he failed English and math is dumb? What would okay, you do yeah. differently? So, so let me just quickly chip in that for braiding herenting, um, the father took him to the convention. I don't know the process through which they got there. And he bonded with the president and he allowed him to you know, give a speech to... The, oh, the so convention. he wasn't in the initial lineup? He wasn't. Oh. I don't think he there was. There will still have been some security so, so clearances There, there must anyway. have been a way he, he, he came up. Yeah. So he got a chance to speak with everyone. Biden shared his own secrets to overcoming stuttering with him. And this boy saw this as an inspiration. Come inauguration, Treasure, he got there Nigerian again. Treasure, what's your Nigerian dream? What's your Nigerian dream? That's the question. My, that's why we're my, advocating. My solution. Is it the solution of Nigeria? No, that's not what I mean. What I mean is restructuring. <laughs> so that each state governor is in charge of their resources and they have to come up with IGR. No, you say we have not changed. No, you have said this thing before this, now. Is, is, it, is it the use of demands? Is it, is it the use of demands? <laughs> The use of demands that you will uh, make governor, and then you say you because you have the whole state oh now. All the <laughs> uh, Basakis, the Oshomoles, no all the Zemperos. I just hope that someday <laughs> we will learn to copy the right things from the West instead of plagiarizing their speeches that we hardly mean. After the break, Jumoke is asking how serious our healthcare emergency really is. You know, I sort of understand how Nigeria's political leaders develop health issues immediately they are arrested for fraud. Nigeria, a health emergency. The political elite seem fine when they're home. They eat well, use their drugs, and fly out for medical checks. But most of them are not in perfect health. Everyone just they manage. We have absorbed Western lifestyles from driving everywhere 
to eating processed food and breathing in polluted air. So we can't expect to live long lives without frequent medical checks to catch anything early and prevent deterioration of our health. I promised to share my experience at the Lagos State Teaching Hospital last, last year. I was pleasantly surprised. Why? Well, my last time there was for just a skin rash, and it wasn't so, such a pleasant experience. I needed to see a dermatologist. The only place to find one I could afford as a student at the time was in the general hospital. My first morning there, I was already too late by 10 a.m. They picked the number of people they could attend to that day. I just paid for my card and came very early the next day. We were very many. It took four hours for me to be directed to the dermatology department. I got an appointment for one month later. I was really worried by this time. My brother, who is a pharmacist, prescribed the cream to use to ease the itchy screen, skin. One month later, after opening prayers and a pep talk by a nurse on duty, I finally saw a dermatologist who said the cream my brother had prescribed was what she would also have prescribed if I had seen her a month before. End of. That experience is why I never take myself to the general hospital again. What a waste of time. But with constant palpitations last year, I was referred to last week the last um, diagnostic center and the experience this time was different. The test did cost some money that the average Akara seller may not afford, but it cost way less than it would have in the private hospital that referred me there. This is the crux of my discourse. The average Nigerian cannot afford healthcare with the level of poverty that pervades the land. I was impressed with the quality of personnel and equipment at the Lasso Diagnostic Center but primary health care has to be available in every nook and cranny of Nigeria. That's the essence of government anyways, not for officials to steal so their own children have a better start in life. Health care ought to be preventive as well as curative, but because of the attendant costs, we're forced to wait till something goes wrong before we seek medical advice. What to eat according to each person's body type, age, exercise, rest, and so on to prevent illness and enjoy a healthy life seems to be a luxury only the middle class and elites can afford. By the time they get into office anyways in their old age, these are politicians who are already sick by that time. Meanwhile, if we all do the right thing, from citizens paying their taxes to public servants using government money to build infrastructure that is world class, we all will be able to access qualitative health care without anyone needing to steal. And I don't mean white elephant project to build a hospital that even you cannot use. Every Nigerian needs health insurance. There's a national health insurance scheme. Not everyone is on it. And it doesn't cover serious health issues. Chicken and egg situation, actually. Which comes first? If every Nigerian is on the scheme, I'm sure we'll be able to cover more serious health issues. And if governments are more honest, we'll use our scarce resources to provide better for the scheme. We also won't need to crowdfund medical bills or look to politicians to help save people's lives in the cases of serious health issues. Will all Nigerians, including you and I, commit to doing the right thing? Uh. I'm doing the right thing already <laughs> by being a Nigerian and being law abiding. The thing is, do I have access to good health care? Yeah. You, you probably do. What mm -hmm. else? What is the right thing <laughs> that do I because, should do? Because um, I, I know that you probably know somebody that knows somebody. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Look at that. That's the Nigerian and, uh, yes, thing. So, and so Look at that. You say, ah, um, okay, Joe, um, Aburo my Mini. brother is in the hospital. <laughs> Aburo Mini. Aburo Mini. Uh, the bill is too much. Uh, and then they'll say, oh, look, healthcare world over is expensive. And that's why they are health insurance, you know, in the case of, because it's not something you're not prepared for. Yeah. So sometimes it, it comes um, unannounced. And then um, our politicians, I really don't know why 
you know, they always fall sick. And like you said, they always they all have <laughs> this underlying ailment. I was wondering why you dropped your voice. <laughs> <laughs> because we, they, they do have underlying ailment because they don't sleep. They have underlying conditions. Doing yes. meetings, <laughs> meetings all the night. The night and, and then they are hustling to make this money and they eventually make the money. They find out that they've lost their heads. And so it's this battle. True. And, and um, probably if Biden were, were in Nigeria, it won't be this sound the way he is I because agree. of his age. You I know? Agree. So uh, that's why they also need to sit down and think it through. Because in some emergency situations, before the flight takes you from here uh, across the Mediterranean, Okbario. <laughs> the, 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 in, in the news today, you have uh, there's something from Bill Gates, and I was talking about healthcare. It referenced a particular uh, um, statistics, which is important for us as Nigerians to, to pay attention to. He said, look, the entire death from COVID-19 in Africa is less than the people who die from lack of access to primary, functional primary health care in Nigeria. God bless every. you, sir. So if 10 people died of COVID in the entire Africa, there are probably about 15 that died from the non-functional state of the primary health care centers in Nigeria. It's something to pay attention to. At that level, that's why you see people with malaria coming to Luth or, or UCH. Because the level where the problem is supposed to have been taken care of before it escalates is not, not working. Yes. It exists but doesn't work. No, it, it, only only a few cases. governors are beginning to show federal interest government in primary built, healthcare know, centers. Federal government built a lot of primary health care centers. centers. Primary health care no, is local no. government. You, you, you no, know, federal, it, government it makes built some. Remember. federal government built some, but no facilities. It makes I me think, remember the former Minister of Health, Professor Olikoye, the late Professor Olikoye He did a lot of work at the local level. Whatever happens to all the foundation he laid at that time. Continuity. You, we, we need continuity. I think well, you see um, healthcare is interesting, uh, your uh, advocacy today. As a people, we need to identify where our priorities are. You know, what are the things you want your citizens to have as important? What are those things that are important? True. Health, education, shelter, and all of this. If you prioritize them, then you can set out a roadmap towards achieving this. Now, what we have are people whose objectives and priorities are different from mm. yours. They have invested so much getting there. Mm -hmm. They need to recoup back to their paymasters and all of that. And all of these infrastructures with the little resources we have. Because now they are not opening other opportunities. Exactly. We're still relying on that single source. Yeah. Yeah. And so the scarce resources, they now have to decide. Do I develop education? Do I do this? Or, or do, do I, I recoup? recoup to get a second term. If he doesn't so, recoup, his paymaster will not give him a second term. So term. these are the challenges a typical politician in Nigeria would face. We'll consider, yeah. So we as a people, again, it comes back to us. Yeah. What are we going to do about this? Because again, we are talking about effect. And, and going back to course, yes. Yes. you know? So for me, I think um, back to Part of my advocacy, humanizing governance. I think our, and back to what we discussed last week, empathy, exactly. leaders with empathy. Yeah. If it's happened, I mean, look at Biden. He lost his son. He could not afford to, to, the money to care for, 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 for his ailment, cancer, at that time. He was already a vice president, was a senator for Treasure. so long. We've had a we, lot of politicians die in the last one year. Has because they're changed, not going out. Has that changed their priority? Is health now a priority? Because no, they see themselves know. dying. We no, wouldn't it is, know. It is a priority now. After all, they are going to take two, two shots <laughs> <So>. <laughs> from Dubai <laughs> and America. It's a priority now. It does become now, a priority. Now, we, we should <laughs> just address <laughs> the National uh, Assembly and all our states, uh, House of Assemblies, Please, it's not funny out there, right? It's not funny out there. We want you to take health as a critical area in Nigeria. A lot of people are dying. A lot of people are suffering. Please, we beg you. Okay. We often don't do all the discussions alone here. We also love to hear your viewpoint on these issues. Responding to advocacy on DNA and paternity testing Uti the Great on Instagram says, 
But while the court holds sway in theory, no one can truly feel the pain and remorse of a man who finds out he's not the father of his kids, especially when it's all of them. Whatever action such a man takes, I understand, even when he's not interested in continuing with the responsibility of taking care of them. Please follow us on all our social media platforms. On Facebook, we're Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram, at Plus TV Africa. Please do hashtag the Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, please go to plustvafrica.com forward slash the Advocate NG. After the break, Liberus is asking us to be less religious and more godly. I be no be so you talk am. Now, so I talk am old Jare, my Jumoke, my sister. Beware of false knowledge. It's more dangerous than ignorance, as counting other sin doesn't make you a saint. Nigeria, religious but less godly. I recently watched some videos posted by some youths claiming to be Muslims, requesting the Inspector General of Police to arrest popular Nigerian comedian Nedu Wazobia, a.k.a. Alaji Musa. One even went, went as far as giving him ultimatum to stop the comedy or have himself to blame, on the ground that his comedy is a mockery of and insultive to Muslim and Islam. Their grouse is that Alaji Musa, played by Nedu, was not a true representation of Muslims as he was fond of always falling cheaply for women with big chests, if you know what I mean. One of them even went further to condemn any Muslim laughing at such comic representation of, Al of Alaji as not being a true Muslim. I laugh in Fufu Day. While I agree that religion is a very sensitive issue in this country, and everyone guides his own jealously, especially the Muslims, but if I may ask, since when has liking a woman become a criteria for determining a true Muslim, or not? How has the name I call myself, or the fact of how I dress in a comedy series, without actual reference to any of the religious paraphernalia, become a mockery of that religion? How has the fact that a man dressed in Jalabia and cannot say no to a chesty lady become a mockery of one's religion? Anyway, with the fashion, I no go see for two gates. Ordinarily, such thread video would have passed for a comic relief or people desperately seeking attention. But considering the kind of country we are in, where we are highly religious, yet less godly, I would advise Nedu not to take such threats as veiled threats. He should report to the appropriate authority immediately and accordingly. I'm constrained to also state that our problem really is not religion, but the practice of it as we are often in tolerance of others' views and opinion, no matter how altruistic, simply because it differs from our religious worldview. A country where we would protest a lady's dressing, but will be silent on the killing of our cleric by criminals. Where youths will kill a lady for preaching a religion different from theirs, and government will be silent on it. Where pastors will collect money from congregations to build schools that the poor congregants are unable to send their word to because of fee. Yet, both religions are Abrahamic in origin, borrowed from the East and preaches love, tolerance, and peace. The average Nigeria is either a Christian or a Muslim. But just last year, 2020, Nigerian breweries recorded sale of almost 300 billion, while Guinness is expected to record sale of 275 billion naira almost totaling 600 billion naira, about $3 billion, which is about 3% of our GDP. Not to talk of the spirit, wine, champagne, and the rest. Yet, both religions enjoy adherence to avoid alcohol. A country with so much churches and mosques, yet drank 600 billion worth of alcohol in one year. I would therefore advocate that we can only truly feel at peace and move forward as a people, if indeed we practice and live love and tolerance that we preach in both religious belief every day. While I'm not trying to encourage desecration of any religion by anybody, it is my belief that the idea of fighting for God has done us more harm than good. It has destroyed homes, farmlands, killed millions, rendered many homeless, even some widow and widowers, others often, and broken many hearts. 
if you feel more anyone has des desecrated your religion's belief or practice, resort to threat and violence is not the way out, as our courts are there to determine such actions and restrain further steps. I, am f I for one, having grown up in a purely Muslim community, community and can recite the Fatiha and a few verses in the Quran, even though I'm a Christian, I do not see anything wrong with a man wearing Jalabia, having a soft spot for a woman. Even Christians wear Jalabia in Israel. And on a lighter note, as my family will call me Alajitia Moniwaka, my nickname in the days of yore, I do not hold people accountable to standard I can't apply to myself. I don't think anyone has any right to in Nigeria, except our politicians. And you know our politicians hate competition. So let's disagree to agree and agree to disagree. Well, Libros, I, I, I want to ask you about the laughter in full, full day. You know, you say you laugh in full, full day is interesting. You know, when you, that, laugh, uh, when you laugh in full, full day, um, I don't want anybody to, I would have uh, laughed publicly here. Yeah, yeah, right. I don't want anybody to yeah. accuse me. Of not laughing but, but right. Just, 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 just to jump in, I, I think these are very serious uh, issues and it's just a reflection of the situation, there's tension, there's mistrust, there's everything. Yes. And these are all the outcomes yes, that we're fallout, seeing. Um, now, the fallout. Um, personally, uh, the Alaji, Alaji Nedu, yeah. I, I, if you'd ask me, I think he's portraying more of a northern culture because yeah. there's, there's a divide between the religion. Because you need to show me in the book, the holy book, where they say this is how you must dress as a Muslim. True. You know, but northerners dress like, like that. that. Yeah, yeah. So if you're using his dressing to uh, to uh, signify or oh, tie him to a religion, then I have a problem with that. I've also read somewhere where another comedian wore or dubbed this Igbo attire and they said he was desecrating it because he wasn't supposed to wear a necklace or something. You understand? So yeah, we have sentimental attachment to yeah. some of those things, but these are all reflection of the time that we're in. True. You know? Okay, so I, I want to jump in and talk about the 600 billion Naira worth of um, alcohol. alcohol that we just BL because champagne wasn't consumed <laughs> in this country in 2020. I don't know whether the lockdown was contributed to it. Maybe the lockdown contributed to it. We don't know. But what we really want to know are these people ghosts. Yeah, you know, they were foreign. This is were consumed by foreigners. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's so good. three things for me. Um, talking about alcohol, we find that during Ramadan, a lot of nightclubs actually shut down. And I always ask myself, if the real Muslims who are not supposed to touch alcohol at all really do not drink, <laughs> why are the nightclubs shutting down during Ramadan? Well, it's it, it, it respect of respect the, the holy Ah, uh, Okay, yeah. I hear you. Mm. Secondly, Nigeria is a country where a Nigerian young girl won Miss World, and so we automatically were to host the next one. And because of religious beliefs that how can they be wearing bikini and dressing like that? It was supposed to be held in Abuja. They had to re relocate outside of Africa because there, there were riots. People saying, no, this is not our culture. This is not what we are about. No, but there was actually what happened. The journalist made a reference that our Muslim brothers and sisters didn't that like. If somebody and was alive. Yeah, the protest was against that line she wrote. Because mm. I remember very well, I was in the thick of it. And well, that was an insensitive statement. And the third that, thing for me it. is, mm. if your religion truly is love, you would correct somebody who's erred in love in such a way that you can correct somebody who is wearing your um, cultural attire wrongly. That, and, and you won't find it offensive, actually. A woman was said to have taken a son to, I think it was Dalai Lama, to say, please let me speak with this guy. He smokes too much. And the guy said, OK, you will need to bring him back in six months. So he brought him back in six months. And then the woman bothered to ask him, why did you say I should come in six months? He said, because when you brought him the first time, I was smoking myself. <laughs> <laughs> I had to wait and wean myself off smoking before I have the liver to, <laughs> to, to, judge, to, to, to judge. even judge somebody and not only the person to stop Smoking. That's there is a less a deep lesson because you can for our religious people you know in that in that Jamaket said something that uh, I think it's very very important. 
um, if you cut through all uh, religion, even the traditional one, I think, one thing that is very common is love, you know, and tolerance, you know. We have a lot of this hypocrisy that you talked about. I want to be seen yeah. to be, but behind the other else. things. So you're not truly, you know, there's that you're religious, but you're not spiritual. Yeah, yeah. Spiritual is you and communing God, God. with God. It's personal. And between that, there's a lot of love because it takes tolerance. Yeah. You have to accept another person. Right. You understand? There's no compulsion. It's so bad that even sex, you are not even a true... A single Somebody asked me, yes, I, you are, not are a you Catholic. a Christian? I said, I'm a Christian. I said, are you saved? I said, which one is the same? <laughs> are, you, are you truly born again? Are you born again? again? And, and I'm like, I'm speaking. You, you, are, you are confusing me. Uh, you know, you ask me if I'm a Christian. The people who were called Christians were those who were. So all of these things, it is not just uh, Islam to Christianity. It's Even within Christianity. Yes. You know? I so in, I remember those days growing up. You see the Ahmadiyya Muslim. Their mosque is different from the other. And I'm like... Is this not all Islam? I tried to, for a long time, get answer to it, and I didn't. But anyway, I know one talk plenty. <laughs> just just to remind us. <laughs> anyway, you're all laughing in Fufu Day, anyway. <laughs> just to remind us that if we are half as godly as, we, as our claim to re religiosity is, our world will be a far better place. After the break, Bolaon is asking us to drop religion and look after our children if we indeed want a better country tomorrow. And I already agree with him, even without hearing him first. <laughs> a little fire you leave today can leave you without a little tomorrow. Out of school children in Lagos. Fatima was my neighbor in Anthony Village. The father was a security guard in the neighborhood. But he was one of those privileged ones who had entire houses literally left in their care because of some unresolved inheritance dispute among the family members of the late owner. I arrived from work early one day and was trying to park when I noticed some kids in school uniforms throwing cudgels to pluck fruit from the tree in the premises. So I had to engage them on the dangers of what they were doing. And I gave them a long stick. So she said her name was Fatima. She was 13, a beautiful and sharp Fulani girl. The intellect struck me, and I thank God that she was in Lagos and not in some other part where she might have been married out at her age. However, maybe I thank God too early. I did not get to see Fatima around for a few months, and the next time I saw her, she was pregnant. Her manner of dressing has changed. And my neighbor, who lived in the north for years, said the change was because she was now married. I was sad. Another brilliant girl's dream of education has been cut short. And she has been made to become a woman and a housewife at 13. I used to think that these things only happen up there. Alas, I was wrong. And right in this state of excellence, these things are happening. Let me lay on this other experience before taking things home. My office used to be right at the junction of Adela Odeku and Akiandeshola on Victoria Island. By the time I arrived in the morning, there were usually some children at that junction who would have resumed before me. They are beggars, and they beg all through the day. In the evenings when I'm going home, they are still there begging. The age range of this are from babies to teenagers. Some of the teenagers are the mothers of the babies. If you go a few meters from that junction to San Josefa Funwa Akiandeshola Junction, there is yet another set of begging children. I got a house speaking friend of mine to speak with them. And here are some of the feedback from that engagement. Some were from Bono, obviously some displacement. Others were from other parts of the north. Some had attended school at some point before relocating to Lagos, while some have never been to school. They have a community and there is a leader, all sort of stories there. Effectively, the menace of out-of-school children may not really be just about the northern state. It is also here in Lagos. When children grow up on the streets like these ones on VI, 
and other locations. With no education and no skills, what will they become in the future? How useful will they be to the society? I wish to advocate that Lagos State take a shot at doing something effective about this subject of children growing up on the street with no education or skills, begging from morning till night. A society that allows this to happen to children is digging a grave of insecurity for itself in some years ahead. The time for specific actions is now. Um, I recently shared a, shared a video on my wall, my Facebook and Instagram, and even on Twitter, where Makoko. Makoko. Yes, I where, saw it. Where school, Lagos State government is shouting, schools must reopen, provide face masks and sanitizers and all was not for the children. And when I saw that video, I was like, this is Lagos. Mm. Hmm. The real Lagos. This is the real Lagos. Lagos State government is not saying this. They are the ones saying hand sanitizers and no uniform, not government face masks. Even the environment these people are living in. And so this same thing is replicated in other areas like um, uh, Jorabadia, um, Bariga, Bariga yes. Alakuko, and all of those areas. So, and yet, like we have all said here, a leader will come, campaign to change these things, get there, and then all your first concern about is how to buy property abroad, and then how to go take your own dose recoup, of recoup. Um, and then recoup political investment. Gradually, why do you think today, we'll talk about the good old days, or when we were going to school, mm -hmm. it wasn't like this. But because a lot of people also were neglected at that time, and so those people that were neglected at that time are now today the ones that we're afraid of. And the numbers we are neglecting now, it's mm. more. It might be very convenient for some of us to send our children abroad, but a time will come, they will still need to come back home. And will there be safe place for them? So that's why we all, I, I, I quickly, sorry, that's why I subscribe to um, Seydou's um, advocacy and ideologies and philosophy. We must all now decide, not wait for answers, mm. decide that we must collectively rise up to begin to, those of us that can confront them, confront them because... When it starts, not be only them, it will affect, it will affect us. all of us. True. For me, I want to, I think I remember during the administration of Governor Fashola, or was it Governor Chinubu back then, um, beggars were taking all the streets of Lagos. Fashola. Fashola. I think it was Fashola. The thing about the going back and forth with our policies is what irks me here. At some point, Lagos did the right thing to read the streets of beggars mm -hmm. and to ensure. Just relocated them. Even if it was a relocation. Yeah. Even if it was Which a caused an opera. An opera, but yes. let me let me also recall that once upon a time there was free education in Western Nigeria. Mm. So whether you were a beggar or you were not, you, you had access have, to free education. It's no longer feasible. So now Politicians of nowadays say it's not feasible. Mm -hmm. So what then is we've talked about Jumoke has talked about health. Yeah. We've now talked education. about people roaming. Talk about know. crime. We've talked about crime. If you can't tackle health, you can't tackle shelter, as you yes. mentioned the other time. Can't you can't tackle, tackle education. education. You can't tackle security. So what can you tackle? Excuse me, sir, I'm ma. What, what exactly are, what, are you tackling? No, if you can't tackle all of this, what you are Wait till breeding. government they do say. What you are breeding is insecurity. Yes, and sir. criminality. Um, she, she now. What would uh, Balawa just say that this is a time, a ticking time, time bomb. bomb? Because, um, and it's a very complicated one because this people that you're describing here, they're the outcome of, you know, um, uh, a culture that believes that children are a gift from God. Mm. So, procreation is just, you can have as many as God That's gives to you and Don't the world plan for them. will take God care will of take it. God will take care of them. You understand? And that ideology still remains for certain people wow. who would not see the big picture. Now, that becomes a problem for us because these people eventually will become the tools that the politicians and would use because they would become, they are no economic value, yeah. no, they are, they are, they've not been nurtured. No value system, 
and they eventually become that. The, in, in engineering, we would call them the slowest. They are the, the ones dragging us behind. Unfortunately, the link. they are a very huge a number. Huge number. That's, that's so it's, it's a time bomb that needs to be looked into. Lagos State, I, uh, the other day I, I saw uh, a documentary uh, from PLOS TV here on this issue, and the commissioner did mention that they are addressing it. And I understand that this is an issue that cannot be taken away. You will take them away, you yes. understand, yes. you will come back. You will take anything. them away, and there's a law in Lagos State that's, that criminal, uh, criminalizes begging. So, but they can't, how many of them would they put in, in jail. prison? So you'll take them, take them to the centers, and once you've been taken three, four times, then you're, you're taking through, aha, uh -huh, you know, through process. So it's a difficult, it's again, dealing with the problem, you need to go back to the cause. How yeah. do we deal with this army of people? Okay, so the, um, they, they call it, in economics, there's the, I'm looking for that economic word, of <laughs> the true value. <laughs> Opportunity cost, that's the okay. phrase that I'm looking for, of sending your children to school if you're a poor farmer or fisherman. Because the more of them you have, the more hands you have to help you in your farm or in fishing. Mm -hmm. So even if the education was totally free, and unless that... The 19th century. Yes, oh. unless and until they're feeding them, which is why the feeding program works. Mm -hmm. At least... Yeah, well, in Osho State, he did. In the first oh, really? tenor. <laughs> in the first tenor of my really? book, no. Really? <laughs> okay, okay, in Osho State. Second tenor, I don't know. Uh, but first tenor, I was uh, there. I saw it work. No, the one they showed you. <laughs> as a press person. Because, no, because Not if you cannot have one. There was, there was a story of a mother who went to school to say, oh, my child is sick. She can't come to school, but I came to collect her egg. <laughs> because you can't feed your child egg. Right. Your government is giving them egg. So that's why the feeding you know, thing worked you know, for, for a while until government again said they couldn't continue with it. It's the back and forth with policy. It, uh, well, if you have spent so much money. See, I, I talk about restructuring. I talk about us changing our I Don't imagine restructuring house. with that kind of a government. <laughs> <laughs> I, I talk about cost of governance. And structuring. <laughs> Because if, unless and until it becomes um, unattractive, when a governor starts to be paid um, like a civil servant, and you cannot touch the government coffers, where only people who truly have the heart of service are going into governance, uh. will they prioritize health? Because you know that when you come out of government, you're also going to face the health system. Will they prioritize education? Because maybe then we have laws that enforce it, Let's that you, your own children. Yes, we yes. have to push Continue them. Continue to push. That's why yes. we're all advocating today, okay. I suppose. Um, a nation that does not take the future of our children seriously will end up breeding fraudsters and grabbers and kidnappers, militants, armed bandits, as youth leaders and heroes and leaders. Well, time is never our friend on this program. However, the advocacy continues on our social media platforms, on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram, at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com slash the Advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time on this station, let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye. Happy New Year, Sid. <laughs> <laughs> five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.